There is not a person in this room that is not constantly up under attack. No matter how blessed you've been, no matter how successful, no matter how accomplished, no matter how healthy, no matter how fruitful you are, somewhere in your life, you are either being attacked or about to be attacked in some area of your life. And God says, I'm going to bless you, but you've got to dress for the battle while you receive the blessing. With every blessing, there is a battle. I would venture to say the greater the blessing, the greater the battle. The enemy would not send that level of battle against you if there were not that level of blessing before you. The level of battle you face is an indication of the level of blessings that you stand to receive. No robber robs an empty house. Nobody holds up a bag lady because she doesn't have anything to steal. If you're up under attack, there's something to be gained. See, you got all dressed up not to run. You got dressed up to stand, not to give place or territory, not to evacuate the turf that's yours. You must learn to handle the negative. Don't ignore it, handle it. You don't have to live in it. You don't have to dwell on it, but you do have to handle it, my opinion. I know some people teach, just turn your head real quick and say, there's no weeds, there's no weeds, there's no weeds. They'll take your guard. So you've got to handle the negative. Here's what part of it is. It's called the great war between good and evil. And there is a war on. The minute you were born, you got involved in the war between good and evil, between darkness and light, between negative and positive, between evil and good, between tyranny and democracy, between weeds and human activity. I mean, the war is on. If good does not arouse itself and become active, guess what moves in? Evil. It's a war, a mental war, a physical war, a financial war between enterprise and ease between accomplishment and failure. It's a war. You're being fought by imaginations, shadows and ghosts. Some of you are stressed to death over what ifs and maybes. You've been stabbed by suppose. You lay in the bed wrestling with ghosts of what ifs and maybes and suppose and I think and I heard and I felt and you wake up tired in the morning because you, you might have slept but you didn't rest because all in your sleep you've been fighting. Most people are living their lives from a heart place and not a head place. They are so engrossed with what the heart feels that they have not covered what the head thinks. Most people are governed by their emotions. They're having a heart experience in a head fight. You will never win a battle if you're having a heart experience in a head fight. You're telling the enemy how you feel has nothing to do with what you know. And if you're gonna deal with a knower, never approach a knower with feelings. You got to approach a knower with facts. The enemy wants to cut off your head and leave you with feelings. Real decisions that move your life along are not coming out of your emotions, they're coming out of your head. Real opportunities that God would open up for you have to come out of your head and not out of your feelings. You, there are so many people that are so abstract and they're just moving along from day to day out of their emotions and their fear. I don't know, I'm just not feeling it today. I'm just not feeling it today. Come back on Thursday. I might be feeling on Thursday. I'm not in the mood for this. I can't handle this. I did, 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 did. And every time you do it, you are canceling out opportunities a person who does not function out of their head is a person without government. A person who moves totally out of their emotions is exempt from the greater opportunity than life.
because you will forfeit what God has given you because of how you feel. Somebody asked me one time, what quality would I pick if I wanted to work with somebody? And you know what I picked first, number one? Strong feeling. Please, number one, give me somebody that feels strong. About most anything, I don't even care. Just so they believe it. Even if they disagree with me. Wonderful. Just so they disagree vigorously. I'm not saying it's easy to win those kind of people to your point of view, but I'd rather do that than to try to resurrect people from the dead. Pump them up every month. Pump them up. Pump them up. I pass. God did not promise you that your feelings would line up with the facts. How many of us are living a headless life because we have not separated how we feel from what we know? You can't, you can't work with people like that. You really can't work with people like that because if I criticize your work,